Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to the Podcasters Domination Show, or maybe welcome for the first time. If you're a new listener, this is the number one place, and I say that with 100% honesty, for you to learn how to launch, grow, scale, and monetize your podcast. No matter what niche, what industry, what you're doing, I'm 100% confident you are going to learn the strategies and the tips and the tactics and the things that people are doing to be a success in podcasting. So my job here is to be your journey, your guide on this journey to that. So welcome and welcome. Today on the show, we have two good friends of mine who are actually twins, whom I met a few months back in Vancouver. And these guys were hilarious. They're extremely uh, bright and intelligent when it comes to marketing. They are digital nomads uh, <laughs> with some crazy stories, which we did not speak about on this podcast because they are not uh, PG. <laughs> so it's for another show. But um, Mike and Rick Teelsmans, Teelsmans like the color teal, took me a while to learn that. But these guys are marketing, uh, young marketing geniuses in my mind, and they specialize in teaching people how to make movements. That is right, movements. So one of the biggest things I teach in podcasting when I'm helping people is it, your show is not really just a show. It, it's, it's like a, it is basically a movement. You're trying to get a group of people to take action and, and get a specific result or achieve something in their lives. So I was really fascinated and excited to bring on Mike and Rick because they have done just that. Um, to get, share with you some of the, some of the results. You know, so one of the guys they work with is a friend of mine named Funk Roberts. And, um, after he joined forces with Mike and Rick, um, their community and his inner circle, his paid inner circle, uh, tribe members, one of them actually got a tattoo of the name of his tribe on, on themselves. So these guys know what it takes to really take a random person, indoctrinate them properly and get them believing in your message, in your movement and get them into a community. And if there's one thing I've heard from a lot of marketing experts in the last couple of Years, more specifically the last 18 months, I would say, is that community and people are the lifeline, the blood of your, your business. If you, don't, if you can't retain people, you're going to have a problem. So these guys are experts in that, retaining, creating movements, building community. And it was exciting to have them on because they walked through their formula for doing that. And they actually also have a product for you that teaches you how to do this. So uh, there's a link in the show notes for that. Full disclosure, I am an affiliate. So I do get a few shekels if you decide to buy it, but I 100% support it. I have bought it myself. So yeah, enjoy and learn something and build a movement. I'll catch you later. Hey, welcome to the podcast domination show where we help you launch, grow, monetize, and dominate the podcasting space. This is a show where we believe that if you can get attention with your podcast, you can influence someone. And if you can influence someone, you can get them to take massive action. And if you can get someone to do that, you, my friend, can dominate. I'm Luis Diaz, your host and founder of Podcast Domination, and I'm your guide. Let's go. So what is going on, guys? It's been a while. I cannot pronounce your last name, so I'm not even going to pronounce it. I'm not even going to try it, but you can say it for me. But I have on the show with me, uh, Mick or Mick, Mike and Rick, <laughs> the twins from the north, the uh, indoctrination experts um, and some guys that have really impressed me. So um, we've been going back and forth a little bit on kind of who, what we're going to talk about today. But before we kind of get into that, if you guys give a brief rundown and say your last name, because I've been literally sitting on Facebook Messenger and like, is that a Tealsman? Tellusman? Like, how the hell do you say that? I don't know why they put the yes at the end into the middle. It happens all the time. <laughs> I think it's because there's so many uh, other similar names. People kind of get like lost in them. But anyways, yeah. Um, share, yeah, share your story a little bit, I guess, how you guys got to where you do now. You share with me briefly how you guys got into marketing. And how you got into like becoming just really, really good at indoctrinating people and turning them into raving fans, which is what we're going to talk about today. Um, but yeah, just from your side of the story, kind of what you do and who you work with and that kind of cool stuff. Yeah, I'll take this. Uh, we were doing like high ticket lead gen for, a, a, I guess, business coaching. Yeah. We're pretty much like one main client that fueled our business. I guess we felt more <laughs> like employees. Um, yeah. But it was just 
it's it took all of our time just this one client because they had all these programs the message was just too thick to actually put into like marketing um it like most just, coaches did every yeah, yeah it was just like too much like what was kind of the problem well it's like all success, place? everything success is like relationships wealth um health just as a coach <laughs> program as a coach it was not dialed in it was really hard to market it yeah. was also like a spiritual background so it's like coaching so for success business. Um, so it was like a hard it was a, it was a very soft offer this person you were working with right yeah but a high end ticket like 15k holy so, crap yeah jesus so that was hard and that was our full time thing was just like man we we need to get them well we got a percentage of their business so it was like it was in our best interest to get them clients for the business and it just it was so hard it's all we did it's all we thought about and it just didn't work well <laughs> something some things work. Some campaigns were like 5,000%, but it was just so hit or miss that at the end of 2017, when we got, you know, kind of kicked out the nest, he's like, let's just try internal marketing, which basically means we are headed out of North Bay, like cold Ontario, desolate tundra Canada. And it's like, oh, okay, cool. Like our main paycheck is gone. So <laughs> this is our opportunity to get a step-by-step -step predictable system for like high-end coaching, like what works? Because it's like, is it VSLs? Is it webinars? Is it like, there's so many things that could work. Yeah. We predictable system yeah yeah that kind of started the journey we uh we eventually like put together a system after like 15k of coaches early 2018 and just like months of testing this so we we got some other like high-end coaches uh, yeah. to test this in 2018 and it it formed into what we call the tribe method because it's like okay well it really isn't about what facebook ad works for what webinar uh because there's so much that could work it's really about one step back into what forms human connections and how do we get back to what once was? And mm. so that just kind of kept forming into early, late, uh, late 2018. We met up with uh, Funk Roberts. And we've been flirting with that guy since I met him two and a half years ago, going on three years now. It's just like, <laughs> <Back and forth. laughs> yeah. And uh, just, you know, he threw that big dick energy. Like he was just always pushing. Yeah. And so he's just like, finally, he's like, what's it going to take for you guys to manage my infusion sauce? And I'm like, no, man, that's not it. That's not the move here. I'm like, we're going to spend an entire day and go through like your yeah. business, your messaging, your, what we call now our MVMT model. Those and, uh, See you. Movement, right? To create a oh. movement, it, it breaks I down to MVMT. And so we did that. We spent an entire eight days in Toronto together. We walked away 50-50 partners on this over 40 alpha program. And that's really like taking the systems to tweaking, you know, what now we're seeing all kinds of like, in the fitness industry, everybody's just so front end focused, putting together programs and like, uh, so we're just seeing all of those problems and yeah. how just creating one back end solution, like a monthly recurring cash machine, um, how that can just alleviate a lot of the problems. So that's kind of what like the tribe method really formed into. And we've learned a lot from like what you're talking about, the indoctrination to really yeah. bonding human connection that's so missing in the, in the fitness world where it's very like click bank centric. Uh, and our last name is Tealman's, like the color. What's that? <laughs> our last name. It's pronounced Tealman's. Like Tealman's Teal like the color. Okay, got it. Yeah, okay. like the color. Men's. Or man's. Oh. If you wish. Yeah, Teal the S is on the end. And what? <laughs> the S is on the end. Okay. Tealman's. Yeah. Not in the middle. <laughs> Not in the middle. Make sure we, we, we highlight that. Very cool. Yeah. So, <laughs> so 2016, you were working with one big client. 2017 was kind of where you guys were kind of finding your feet. A bit after that, is that correct? And then 2018 is kind of like you guys get getting traction, starting to test the product out, like the, your methodology out with other people, and yeah. building a system that of of things you saw that worked and things you saw that were proven. And then you meet Funk. Funk's a friend of mine, awesome dude. Um, he's got a great podcast, and uh, and it's really hard to scale that model. And uh, I know you guys have been quite successful with it so far, but I want to dive into Tribe Method and kind of talk about what it is and also maybe some use cases. Like I'm sure just like what you guys were saying before connection and, and being able to connect with a human, the human um, is super, super important. It can be used in a lot of other things, right? It's kind of like basic human. It's, it's, it's essential. So I guess let's go through what, what the tribe method is and kind of what it does. And, and we can kind of spit off, you know, go off in different directions from there. Yeah. Uh, what it isn't does. So it was designed to say, how can we help someone who has like, you know, high ticket coaching was where we came from. Right. Yeah. So we're like, it, it was a, a way to say, how do you get clients? 
So right. how do you, so since it wasn't about the funnel, it was about what goes into the funnel, then it became like messaging. But that's because the messaging then goes into the funnel, which goes into the vehicle, which then goes into the tribe, which is really where you uh, focus on like support and building that tribe of people that pay and stay. Because as long as you're walking the talk in front of them, then yeah. they'll pay. So that's why, you know, the tribe vibe is more important. That's why we don't believe in choosing your niche or your niche, because then it, it becomes transactional. So mm. if you just lean in and realize, cater to the people who want what you have, who are where you were, then as long as you're in, like one step out of them, then they'll keep looking to you for answers and solutions and pay and stay. Got it. Got it. Yeah. When you say messaging, what does that mean exactly? Like messaging, like the copy, the headline, like, is it like your yeah. mission statement? I'm sure some people like myself would have some questions about that. Yeah, it's kind of hard to explain and it's kind of hard to get people to, to give a shit about, right? That's why mm -hmm. that's, I feel like one of like our best skills is, is right. seeing, because you can't read the label from outside the bottle, right? Inside so, the bottle. You can't from outside. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're inside the bottle. Yeah, 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 you can't read the label from outside. Anyways, so that's why it's like, it's really easy for us to look at a business and just see where all the pieces fit together. It's like, you know, I think at one point Funk was targeting women or like, uh, or at least like younger males. And then it's like, that makes no sense. It's like, you got to speak to the you before you look at that hero journey. It's like mm -hmm. where you were before you had answers. That and Dan Locke even said that when we were in Vancouver, yeah. he speaks to the younger version of himself. So everything yeah. he does to the the version of him before he had answers, and that's how it should be, right? Because everybody that's on this journey, all these like high end coaches, these fitness pros, these uh, these people that are transformation based, yeah, have all gone through that like Joseph Campbell journey of a thousand faces or journey of a thousand whatever. And so it's that twelve steps that every good movie follows. And so like you went through a shit storm, found an answer, came out the other side, brought it to people, tested it. And so then people are like, okay, well now I should pick a niche. It's like, no, you shouldn't. You are your best avatar, right? Yeah. So it's just trying to focus on like the one path you can create, like the one person, the one problem, the one solution, the one audience. And just, you know, as it's really stepping into what we say is like, there's a difference between an expert who has answers that helps people mm -hmm. versus a tribe leader. So, I mean, Funk is going to go to the grave with his people because he is a tribe leader. Like, they look to him like he's a god. Like, he's got all the players. He's a few <laughs> of them, right? Right. That, that's all you need to be. But it, it also is a lot of commitment. So the messaging really was, uh, how do we dial it all in? Got and, it. Yeah. I it mean, there's, up, there's a framework. but Yeah, it ends up being like a total rebrand. It pretty much usually is. Yeah. And, and you guys touched on something there being a tribe leader, which is super important. There's a million experts out there, but if you lead a tribe, meaning you have someone, people behind you, you're like, that are looking up to you. Uh, how does one make the transition or like, what are some things on a tactical level that tribe leaders do that experts and thought leaders don't in the marketplace? Like just to say when they're, when they're, when they're out talking to people on Facebook or you know, what, what are the differences between the two? Yeah. And I was thinking about this cause, um, it's like somebody that I know, I respect their business model. They've got a, a banging Facebook group, got a banging service. I was like, it's all there. Like even Vince Del Monte's mastermind, like yeah. a great example of like a great business leader for these people. But it's like, what is missing? Because it doesn't feel like it's got that, like that movement piece behind it. It doesn't yeah. make me like pay and stay forever. So it's like, there's something clearly missing. And I think that's because uh, taking Vince, for example, then he's got a lot of good information and he's very good at helping people through growing their business. But I don't know what I'm aiming towards, like starting here and getting here with like success metrics along the way. Like yeah. that's not clear. maybe because he wants to cater to more people at different steps, but. So you're saying uh, Monty, like he's got, like he's great at what he does, but there's something missing. Well, there's like not a, a big picture vision almost for his people. Yeah. Like the journey that I'm on, I don't, well, I mean, it's it's more like so with Punk's business because that's what we're paying for um, for that specific mastermind. Then there's no clear like you're here. I want to get you here. It's going to take these steps, and therefore his back end mastermind, like the training, could be sequential that way to take a linear path. So you know, there's like checkpoints, success metrics, maybe rewards, uh, and then it's kind of like gamified, right? You know yeah. where you are in the journey. You know what you're heading towards. Everyone's got this clear common goal, this shared belief, this like we're all fighting for the same thing against the same thing. Like yeah. that's really there because people are at different stages. 
you know, Frank on his way to eight figures, some people just trying to make 10K a month. Right. It's all different. So yeah. I yeah. That could be broken up into like different segments. That's that, what we're yeah. seeing. Like, um, cause we were just talking about this one coach we hired last year and yeah. he's the most expensive coach we've ever had. He was like 10 K us. So for us Canadians, it was like 13 and a half K. It was right when we lost like our main source of revenue going on this journey. It's like, he helps build seven figure funds. We're like, sweet. That's exactly what we want to build for our clients. That's yeah. Our client. yeah. And he'll have the magic solution. The like, you know, yeah. the thing that we can just I was take, like, run with. Yeah, get success. He'll have a system. We can use yeah. that system for our clients. Perfect. Yeah. Not at all. Like, I don't think we got any of value from this, from this guy. And I feel like <laughs> name drop, but there was no sequential pattern. His backend membership site was just uh, like a training he did in Australia. And then, you know, a Facebook live he did another time. It was just a clusterfuck of data. And then yeah. a Facebook group that had some stuff going on. And so how do you make that change where it's like, instead of like, a lot of people have membership sites. They have like podcasts, for example, like a, just a clusterfuck of podcasts. How do they take, what's kind of the, when you guys step in and how do you, you know, how do you design, maybe you rip all that shit out and you start from scratch. You mentioned like starting making it a journey. How does one go about creating that journey in membership site or a podcast, whatever it may be? Right. Well, Cause first I want to look at like what we call the trifecta to see if it even works. Cause mm-hmm. it definitely doesn't work. If you don't sell a transformation, then this isn't for you. Right. Like it's, it's a very much a transformational based service model that we do um, mm-hmm. because if you look at the easiest way is just to take your hero journey, right. From starting, leading, running a podcast. Yeah. And so you figured out a lot of things and then you decided to help other people once you had those answers. Right. Yeah. So it's like your hero journey and then theirs started to overlap. And then you take that and then you just look at what I like, where are we going together? And so it's kind of like this, what I like to say is like, it's me, you, and us. So I did this, I helped you do that, but now together and together being like a group of people, yeah. where are we going? What is the big vision that we're trying to create? So it's like, okay, we're going to be creating a hundred thousand a year with a podcast. Very right. simple. Right? So we got that mission, that vision, and then beliefs. You need to shift their beliefs to say what you're doing over here is not going to work. Whether it's like MLM or like fitness or like your Google or your like YouTube. Yeah. Drop that because podcasting is the vision. And Dan did this really well with like YouTube. He got everybody indoctrinated into I'm the YouTube channel because you can get 29 million minutes a month if you consistently post videos for four years, right? Yeah. And so it's like you kind of like shift their beliefs to say this is your answer, this is your system. And then what you do is you say I can take you from zero to 100K in 12 months by doing this system. Module A is like this, right? And you just move them through. And so everything is very sequential. So you're holding their hand throughout the entire thing. And this is what we did with Funk really well, is we took every program he had and we made one solution. So even Mm -hmm. all our front-end products, everything leads back to one main thing. Over 40 men, how to get them to lose at least 20 pounds body fat, but like lose weight, gain muscle, but more or less, we shift who they become. And that's the thing that not a lot of people are doing or doing well, is that we need to get two things the first thing is what they'll actually like pull their credit card out for yeah which is losing belly fat 100 percent. you know you ask why five times you get down to some like deep rooted issues but like yeah. sales call or is that like on your sales page like sales page for sure and your facebook ads right they say like your cold audience has to be um solving a problem so this is what people are actively searching for it's what they think about at night they look in the mirror they're insecure about something uh so bleeding with money or you know, things that deal with self-esteem and fitness, it's super easy. Get paid, get laid, stay healthy. Get paid, get laid, right? Cool. So if you follow those, it's really easy. I want to pause for a second there. Um, that's really important. Like I love what you guys said because it's like the same thing on a podcast. Yeah. Your first couple episodes should be high value, very customer driven, very like about the customer. Maybe telling a little bit about your story and how you've gotten results. That's one episode. But also like you're giving them the big high value stuff that they're coming for, that they're like the vanity stuff. Mm-hmm. And then you go deeper. And is that kind of the same similar formula with you guys? Like you're saying like sex, money, you know, like the hard offers, right? Yeah. Really concrete offers that sell. And then you can gotta get into like the more the, the beliefs, self-limiting beliefs. And yeah. Are, you know, so. yeah. So you want to lead with the things that they're actively searching for. So it's give them what they need or like give them what they want, right? So we lead with belly fat. Yeah. And right away we we talk about who they become. So that's the second thing is identity shifting. Okay. So we need to change who they are. Right. So we are creating alpha men. So we lead with belly fat. 
and every testimonial is just showing like, you know, guy who lost 40 pounds, 30 pounds, 20 pounds. Right. But as soon as they get in, they get to see our manifesto of what it means to be an over 40 alpha and what that means for like, you know, they just get it done. They don't have excuses. They take care of their kingdom. They're like, have the respect of their kids. And, you know, they love their wives. And, right. So we, we shift who they become and everything we celebrate is who they're becoming along the way. So yeah, we, don't, we don't lead with any of that on the front end. No, no. But that's what gets them to stay. So that's yeah. how we indoctrinate them. That's how we start to build, you know, what we kind of call that boner juice. Like what gets them to, because everything comes down to getting them to feel something. We all make decisions based on emotion that just mm-hmm. not logic. So you get them to feel things. And they're going to, like in, in, in doc is, is one of the most powerful places. That's why we kind of bring it back to the in doc. Yeah. Is we'll bring people through this highly emotional process. And then they're spending thousands of dollars. And as soon as they put that credit card down, they get a thank you email that says, look forward to your first call. And it's like, everything just gets deflated. It's like, that's the moment of highest emotion you're going to have. Yeah. You really need to create safety and you need to create, um, like that's your moment to truly bond. And I know Russell Brunson said this, that you got to lead with like really open ended things, right? Like lose 20 pounds. And Mm -hmm. then as soon as they're in, that's when you slowly, you know, you start to tell your story, you start to get them emotionally connected to you because that's what keeps them around. So get them in and then keep them in. So that's why our model, like our roadmap, is pay and stay. It's two sides. Get them so, in, get them in. <laughs> get them in, stay in. Um, so with the um, with indoctrination, it's really interesting because like installing beliefs from like the biggest podcasts I see, they do a good job of this. They have a community. Uh, one of my friends who was uh, actually in this group, his name's Tony Lorenzo, he has a massive, amazing, him and his wife, Alisa, have a massive, amazing community of people who absolutely love them. Like these guys are like the rock stars. So they've done a good job of installing beliefs. So, and I want to get a picture of like, how do you do that? Is that a video? Is that r- written material? Is that like you give them a shirt that says, here's our beliefs, like kind of paint a picture for me. Like, what are you guys doing to print those beliefs onto someone's brain? That's like, yeah, they keep it around, I know the, uh, yeah, it, it's like a nonstop thing. So that's yeah. where, uh, if we pull it back to the identity piece yeah, and back to like what's missing in Vince's mastermind, I believe. Yeah. And, is like that um, identity shift because I don't know a linear path, but I also don't know who I'm becoming in the process. Got it. Why the alpha piece is so huge. So everything wraps around that. Like when they get into the program, then there's videos that talk about like, this is what you're becoming. Like we set the precedence that an alpha is unlocked and achieved after 12 months. It could have been one month. could have been our 30 day challenge unlocks <laughs> alpha status. Yeah. Oh, we'll pay for 12 at right. least. Right. <laughs> And then we have, so then we lock that in with a manifesto that we have as an email after day eight. So we get through the cold beliefs, like the, the hard stuff. Yeah. And then by day eight, then we start talking about like, this is what's happening. This is the group we're creating. This is who you're becoming in the process. This is what it means. So we need to give them the, like the framework to say, this is who you're becoming. And this is what it means to become alpha so yeah. then in the process. Then it's like these Funk reiterates on the coaching calls and then the rituals and the ceremonies, like it all wraps into this is like who we're becoming, who we're shaping. So they need constant belief, but then they take that over themselves talking about like alpha lifestyle balance, taking care of their neighbors, taking care of their wife, supporting each other. Like that's, we set the presence and then they roll with it. So they they need to like help us welcome new members, join the coaching calls, uh, all these things because it's like we're telling them that engagement stuff is what we expect from an alpha. Like you're stepping up. So we basically take what we want them to do for yeah. us and ingrain that into like our processes. You ingrain that in them through like through different touch points. One yeah. People yeah. love to be told what to do. So we tell them who to become, teach them how to become that, tell them that there's 12 months to becoming that and celebrate them along the way. And so we're just constantly... So that's how we're shifting their beliefs. Wow. Is that we're telling them what to believe in. We're telling them how to get there. And then everything we do wraps around that identity. So we really don't, we don't even celebrate a lot of like the weight loss. And obviously that's what the program wraps around. So that's you get like, but mm-hmm. right. we celebrate the alpha characteristics more than anything else. Got it. And you're building that culture. And I think that's super important. And, and like for longevity and like people sitting around with you, like going back to our Dan example, like Dan Locke, like it's why he has such good fans because they all love him. Like he's built a culture 
any ecosystem. If you've ever been inside of his, his courses and stuff. So um, that's a big reason why it's so successful. So when it comes to that, what are some of the things you see people doing wrong when they're trying to build something like a movement, whether it's a podcast and they've got like, there's a lot of alpha man podcasts out there, but a lot of them suck and they have no followers. They have no, they have no following because they don't have these things, I think. So what are people doing wrong? Well, I think at first is that if they don't have the following, they're trying to say like this alpha man, whatever. Um, I don't think they've done the journey to get there. Like if you look at Wake Up Warrior, he's very clear on the journey he had to take to be the man. And he's so vulnerable that yeah. he shows the pain. So it's relatable. And so I think these people who are like alpha man, this is what you're going to do to be an alpha man. And it's, and they don't have a following. I think it's because they, people can see right through marketing. Yeah. It's not what it was 10 years ago when you could just run an AdWords thing and just, you know, it was, it was, wild west back then but now everyone can see the authenticity in something so you see somebody who's like running this like you know how to be an alpha man whatever and you yeah. look at them and you can just kind of see their material and you know it's all bullshit right they're just trying yeah. to to perceive this status that they haven't quite lived but then you look at the people who who like dan Locke, he shows the journey that he was he was where you were he always brings it back to i was where you were and now i am hard to relate to because i i have you know, 1.6 million YouTube subscribers, but I once had zero. I once had mm. to, you know, uh, bankrupt or whatever. Yeah. Like yeah. relatability is a huge piece. So I think I think that's a big part of it. Is I don't think people are willing to be vulnerable. Okay. Or they don't really go through enough shit to you know to speak about it. Got they're it. Not really willing to do that. People are you know they're looking for quick wins rather than like to be the tribe leader. It's a lot of work. It's a huge commitment. Got it. But like awards are, are huge. So it does take a lot of commitment to do that. But also what we're seeing, which we didn't notice until we went to Vince's group and started to see inside fitness, which yeah. is just five months, then it's very, very front end focused. So it front end focused, you mean like they're worried about selling a product? Yeah. Yeah. It would all be like, okay, so I built this thing and Joe's going to write the copy and Tyler's going to build the sales page and you guys are all going to affiliate it. And I'm going to give 75 to 100 percent of my commissions so I can buy some customers, and then they do it again. And I'm like, okay, so you're burning out everybody's lists. Nobody's really making money except for the affiliates who have the lists in the first place. Everybody's relying on the same affiliates, and then it's confusing because, like, why if I'm trying to, you know, just get more jacked, why do I need to buy this program and this program and this program? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes sense. And then people are going deep on their their programs. Like, I have this perfect program. They're like. And then they get upsold this one and then this one and then this one. I'm like, why does this program not teach me these things? It makes no sense. So with Funk, he had the same thing. All of these offers, very clickbank, very spammy, very, you know, just transaction. money, yeah, transaction focused. We're like, okay, yeah. let's make this transformation focused and build one system that takes the average man over 40 from flabby and, you know, from what we said, flaccid from Frumpy, flaccid, no, flaccid, flaccid, flaccid from, like, lazy. from face to feet, whatever. Um, so like an alpha man. And you see these pictures. You see these guys who just look lifeless and flabby. And yeah. they see them full of life and energy. And like they've, you know, they're like, I've earned the respect of my kids again. I've earned the respect of my wife. Like we're going on dates. Like our sex life is better than it has been in years. And it's like that's the, that's the emotion behind it. Like there's like real transformation. And so we're just so focused on the back end systems, rituals. And, and we can see like the one guy, he said the highlight of his uh, July 4th week, no, uh, Victoria weekend, whatever it is. The highlight was that he talked to his mechanic about the, the brotherhood mm. and got into the 30 day challenge. And this was, this was the highlight of his weekend. It's incredible. <laughs> they're all promoting for us. Right. So there's, they're exactly. They're talking about it because you've given them a transformation, which yeah. is really interesting here. Um, so with that, you, you mentioned rituals. Yeah, yeah. So I'm trying to think, I'm trying to drive this back home to the podcast who listening to this, like, right. why are we doing this interview? Right. And the reason why I want to bring it back to that is because like there's a lot of things you're doing with indoctrination, with how you guys bring someone who's completely cold into a, a, a family member who's like feels like they're a part of something bigger. Mm -hmm. Um, you mentioned rituals. How do you guys what are some rituals? Give me some examples. How do you guys teach them and how do you get people taking action? Because I think it's something big. I think a lot of podcasters can do to start to get their people to listen more and actually share the show and grow their own following for them. Yeah. I'd say trying to tie it specifically to podcasts, then uh, anticipation and expectations, definitely a easy mm. thing to do. 
Okay. And you know what's coming up. Then yeah. you can seed that. So, I mean, that's classic, like, email copywriting, too, is just seeding what's coming. Open loops. Like, even with our phasing. Yeah. Then, it's like the marketing doesn't stop once somebody's a, a customer. Then phase one is selling phase three because then we're saying like, um, or I guess like someone going into phase two, then they start eating more carbs. So we set the expectation that they're not going to lose as much weight. They might actually gain weight because they're building muscle. But then yeah. phase three, that's when they start shredding and that's when they see their abs. So then we're constantly seeding. I think Vince does a good job in his group is that he's got guests coming on and yeah. so puts it in the calendar and he tags up a bunch of people and then he says, are you coming live or do you need a replay? So then he gets them to like verbally commit, verbally commit to, um, to what their decision is. So if they said they're going to be live, people like to be congruent with what they've already said. So then they're likely to show up live just because they kind of stated they would be right. So it's the anticipation and the expectations set is something that can definitely be done. It's also um, the, a tactic that is huge for us in the brotherhood um, that's more for like the Facebook group side than podcast is uh, once we start spotlighting members in the group. So it's not just okay. like, Oh, they, yeah, you lost a bunch of weight, which is great because it's a weight loss program. Yeah. Fuck that. Everybody's promoting muscle building and fat loss. So because we focus on the alpha stuff, then somebody who has like a physical transformation, but has been super active in the group and supporting other people and showing that alpha side, then mm -hmm. that's spotlight them to the group and say they're the alpha of the month. And so they feel validated. We get their backstory. We get a sick before and after photo that we can use in our cold marketing. But now they take this ownership over the group and yeah. can, like their engagement explodes. So they, just, they start supporting everyone else, welcoming new members. Other people congratulate them on like being the alpha brother and that's when they start like referring more people that's when we set them up on backpacks so they can start like actually getting paid yeah we send them a t-shirt so now it's like free marketing but they feel extra validated and they stick around longer and so yeah that one thing alone has just been huge for i'm trying to think of how you can do that with podcast but i think if we look at the future of podcast it used to be very audio based yeah but now it's audio and video based definitely and it's you know, like where's it going to be going? And I'm thinking that as we're talking about this, engagement is a big piece. And it feels like podcasts are very uh, omni, like one directional. Yeah, a lot of times one directional. So you got to have a community like this. Yeah. Like thing. So how do you get other, right? right? Like how do you get your your listeners engaged in the conversation, coming in, asking questions? Right. The more you can engage your people, the more they feel like they're a part of the experience with you. And that's what we've really found is you want your people to. You want their, their their lifestyle, their identity to be as closely tied to you as possible that it's almost like they can't live without you. Like we we have uh, like a bit of a formula for building addiction into our programs, mm -hmm. uh, which it sounds bad, but I mean, it, it's really <laughs> good if you're marketing. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah. So yeah. How do you make them almost rely on you, right? Like if you did a podcast at the same time every week and you said, this is where we're going from zero to 100K in 12 months, right? We're going to like stack podcast guest right from i think you do have a four point system right like from launching to scaling to monetizing four points yeah exactly launch to should be a monetized scale yeah so you're like a podcast host should like you have certain guests and then certain content that goes out in the launch phase that then goes out here that then goes out here and then it's like okay so how do you get them engaged and then anticipation is easier because they see that okay well i can help you launch it but like you're gonna need to know how to scale it, or else you know growth sucks. But scaling is sweet, yeah. and then monetize it because what's the point if you don't make any money from it? Right. right. So then you have that anticipation, but then they feel like they're a part of it because you make them feel a part of it, right? Almost like you need them as much as they need you, and then you guys rely on each other like a tribe does. So mm -hmm. the more you guys can build engagement into it, yeah, uh, and then like personalization, the more you can spotlight people so that they feel significant. And then you're creating certainty just as much as you're creating uncertainty. So you want to bring in novelty whenever possible. Like bring in this thing that's just like from left field. It's like, this doesn't fit at all, but like it's going to change your world. Can you explain that? Give me like an example of how you guys done that in the, maybe in the group with your with funk and all, or any examples on the mind. You've given a lot of good stuff. A lot of good stuff. I think podcasters can really grab onto the anticipation yeah. thing, spotlighting experts or not experts, spotlighting their, their tribe members. 
people, like, yeah. Like, reviews. Like, people who, like, have done stuff you talk about on the show, and then they get results. And it's like, oh, well, like, you need to spotlight that stuff. And then it shows other people, like, holy crap, I'm not the only guy listening to this show. There's other people benefiting, listening along with you right. on this journey as well. There are different stages. Contests. Yeah. Contests could be cool. What's that? The people who do contests for every show. And so, like, one of you are going to walk away with something from my guest. Like There's this. some people who do it. It's it's a lot of work, but like con- like for our clients, like we do, we have um, King Sumo software, which is like contest software. It's really simple. Oh, yeah. um, it's really easy stuff, but it's like you can literally any of our clients can hit us up anytime and just say, "Hey, Lewis, want to run a contest?" All right, cool. Let's, let's jump on the phone, let's figure it out, and we throw up the page, we drive traffic to it, and they collect the email subscribers. So yeah, like there are some people who do it, but it's one of those things that's like it's it's not used enough, right? Yeah. Um, do you guys use contests at all or kind of like, how do you, uh, we talked about gamifying it, but, um, any specific examples there? How you done this? Some it's more there? on challenges. Yeah, okay. yeah, for sure. But in terms of gamification, one that we kind of used when we were studying, uh, is, um, called the strenuous life. So the art of manliness had this like great pod- podcast content curation. Then they launched this program that, uh, they launched too. So it's a start stop type of 12 week thing. Uh, yeah. And I know they launched two simultaneously this last time, I think a month ago, and they sold out every spot in four hours at 200 views. So I think it was like a $40,000 uh, window in four hours. Damn. But they've done a really good job at creating uniformity and gamification because it's all wrapped around like you're going to summer camp again. So it's like, you know, mm-hmm. to be a man, you need these kinds of skills that it's talking about like without strenuous activity, without these skills, like you're... You're not really like, let's go back to when men were men. Yeah. And get the skills of like, they got to like carry boulders. Like, so what they did was they have weekly egg guns. I don't even know if I'm saying that right, but it's like weekly challenges. Yeah. And then every time they do that, they get a badge and they can actually buy that badge and put on a board if it has like their shipping and stuff. But everything's gamified because you learn a new skill, you test that skill, and then you get that badge. So it's like, I think there's even like a profile and you get this digital badge and you can actually physically buy that badge and then have it in real life. So everything, it's like a game and it keeps them yeah. engaged and it keeps them feeling like significant and they're building their skills, but they also get a uniform. They get the strenuous life t-shirt and these like forest screen summer camp type shorts, gym clothes. <laughs> they get like a passport. Kind of thing. Yeah. Just come like a guidebook. So they build like a identity. little welcome package. Yeah. Identity oh. challenges. So unlocking. Yeah. Clear whenever path. you can theme something, Hundred percent. Yeah, it's like scouts. Yeah, adult scouts. That's dope. I mean, that's that's really cool. I, I love like so. That was art of charm, or no, yeah. art of manliness. Art of manliness. Yeah. manliness. Um, I know they got a podcast. So they did a thirty day challenge. Yeah, uh, I'm guessing they advertise it on the show and on their website. They're pretty big there as well. How did you guys hear about that? By the way, did you follow them or you kind of like study them or what were your? I just stumbled upon that, and then I realized like, man, they have everything we talk about. They yeah. got. Yeah, even like hazing, like if like a pre phase before these fifty two weeks, then there's like this one week, twelve weeks, I forget, where they want you to accomplish like seventy five percent of that course. It's like a course before their membership, mm-hmm. and if you uh, achieve like seventy five percent of what you set out to do, then they'll, they've got this custom gold coin, and that's the only time you can get this. You can't buy it. You can only earn it, and you you only get one shot to do so wow so then yeah i feel like i mean once you go through that then you, you become like a gold coin owner but you're also obviously you want what's next yeah yeah you're gonna buy the thing right yeah more, so hazing's huge just why like sororities and frats they have to go through basically hell week same with like army hell week uh, yeah. the more you have to put in to earn your way into something the more you're going to appreciate it the more you're going to get out of it it's like when you pay 30 dollars for something versus thirty thousand for something right it's skin you know, game. Yeah, more. yeah. It's also like each phase we have, like each month is a phase in Funk's Brotherhood, but they have to physically put in, like opt in to mm-hmm. start their next phase, which is like we could just roll it out and then they basically like roll into phase two and yeah. so we're sending them stuff, hoping that they stay engaged. But this way that they have to opt in to unlock the next series of emails, workouts, etc. Then yeah. one, it helps automation. So then we know to trigger everything, but also yeah. they've physically made the commitment themselves to start. I'm declaring so now fat loss phase two. 
this is happening. Go. Got it. So they've got to, yeah, they got to put skin in the game. And then we can end up again, because as soon as they submit that, boom, Indoc starts again. Another video. Welcome to phase two. And that's when uh, one thing that I put in our roadmap is, um, forget what I called it, but it's like emotional support type of thing, because it's one of these, like, we know phase two, uh, we're mm -hmm. muscle building. So your skill might go up. That's going to piss you off. We know that just letting you know, right? So we tell them the things that they're going to encounter. The more you say these emotions you're going to hit, it's going to make you feel this way. So mm -hmm. when you do know that it's okay, get it done anyways. Got it. Don't complain in our Facebook group. Talk to me a little bit about the roadmap. And it's called the tribe method. And there'll be a link below this video for it. And I want to know about it more because I'm going to buy it. <laughs> so first and foremost, I'm going to buy it. Uh, but it's, it's a really interesting series of thing, things you've got going on here. Um, tell you, yeah, just break down what the tribe method is. I know we touched on it before a little bit, but what it is, like kind of who it's for, and let me know kind of like, I'm curious to see how a podcaster could use this. Like if someone's got a great business already and like, they're like, I want to get, create like a magnetic audience around this show. Um, what would, you know, speak to that a little bit. If you guys maybe were starting a podcast as well, what would you guys do? I'm curious for that. But um, we can start with the, the tribe method, like what it's what it is and who it's for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we. Uh, I mean, it, it was built because we were onboarding a new client, and then for our own systems, then we're like, all right, this is what we'll walk her through. Yeah. So then, once that was conceptualized, it's like, well, shoot, that's a roadmap, which is basically a visual representation of everything we've been trying to create the past, like ever since we got booted out of the nest from that one client. Me too. Yeah, yeah like, it's like it all came together one day as soon as we onboarded this new client. <laughs> we were in Oaxaca City, taking a break from the beach. like, two months ago. And then it was like nighttime, Mexico. And I just, I was like, well, yeah. as soon as she pays, like we need to make sure that the indoc is there because we need her to see what indoc looks like. And then that to trigger a text message because we need to show what like the personalization and automation looks like that needs to trigger a postcard like a handwritten note because that's what i want her to do and i'm like shit so we just wrote out step by step every little thing that we need to do a on the getting paid side which is like all the branding all the messaging all of the things that we need to get her to believe and yeah then on the back what we need to do as soon as you get paid to end up to move through uh it's kind of like a five set system yeah and um it's like uh, yeah but uh <laughs> so that's it's it just like as soon as I wrote that out, I was just like on a napkin. It's like one of those moments that your entire business just becomes clear on a napkin. Yeah, like you yeah. can't predict it. You know those moments. Yeah, and so yeah, like, plan, like the whole business model, like wrote down on the fucking piece of paper, like wow, that's it. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, I think this is this is the this is what we've been looking for. Yeah, everything that we've studied, every business we've studied, every time we're out for burritos and he's looking at a BSL, that it's like it just kind of came together. And then I showed it to him, and it's just like, he's like, yeah, 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 I don't know. And then I showed it to uh, one of the guys in the mastermind, Brandon Hale. That yeah. We're, we're talking to Yeah, he's yeah. Like, Bro, this is fucking sick. <laughs> oh, sweet. And so I'm like, okay. So within a week, we had this entirely set up as in like, a, it was, it's like, we wanted it to be a checklist that people could just kind of cross off as they go. Do I have all of these elements into getting paid on the front end? And then am I moving people step-by-step, step-by-step, sequentially through to get results? And then yeah. once you get results into what we call tribe two, which is like the second system, right? Because there should always be an ascension ladder. And then how do we make them the best ambassadors we've ever gotten, right? And that's the problem with courses or front end is that I, I look today, the average completion is 6.9%, which means nobody Great. gets results, which means nobody's going to talk about you in a good yeah. way at least. And it's not going to change any lives. So then on the back end, we created um, all like the, 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 I wanted to, to speak to every single point in the checklist. Yeah. And this is what this means and how to do it. This is what this means and how to do it. So there's a series of videos in the back end, getting paid, getting saved. And then how buying the roadmap shows you the meta version of every element that we have and how this is being used. So kind like of like automations you have going on with, Everything you got going on? Okay, cool. Yeah. That's, that's interesting. Because you guys described it to me. Like, remember, we were walking to get ice cream. We were, get, we were getting gelato that one night. And then we never got gelato ice cream. But <laughs> um, explained it to me. And I was like, holy crap. Like, that's 
that's really, really important these days when it comes to buying something online because the experience, like you were saying before, like the marketing doesn't stop when someone buys. Like that's just the beginning of the relationship. Oh, yeah. so, like the marketing doesn't stop on your podcast when someone hits subscribe because like I subscribe to a bunch of shows, but I don't listen to them all and I don't buy from those people more, you know, moreover. So it's, uh, it's, it's really, really important. Um, what did I miss? I, I would just say wrapping up here really quick, like, uh, well, not really quick, but as quick as you want to be, what would be some things that we would need to make sure we cover on this episode that we didn't to make sure someone who wants to um, really start to be better at being a tribe leader uh, would want to make sure they, they, they cover? Yeah, and you're saying, what would we do if we were to start a podcast? Yes, don't forget that question. Yeah, yeah, let's cover that first. Yeah, <laughs> I'm interested. I'm just curious um, as, a, as a student. We had a podcast that we just decided to start and decided to stop because it was going well, as people do. And uh, that was like in our cross country days when we were, you know, getting, uh, yeah. we were, yeah, we we're getting into digital marketing. We we're taking these courses in LA. We wanted to test everything always. And so, yeah, we we're in cross country. So, what'd you run in cross country? I used to run cross country a little bit too. Oh, uh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, sick. It's like, yeah. Yeah, um, we did college. Well, we did high school and college cross country. What was your best 5K time? This is like so random. I'm just, I'm just curious because I used to race one 5K ever. It was 17, 17 minutes and like 20 something seconds. Yeah, we do 8K. Yeah, huh? it was 8K races that we we raced. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, I guess like five miles, right? That'd be five miles. I think my best was yeah. three something. Five, no, it's a little bit. It's like three three point one. Come five k is is three point one, but yeah, we're, we're lagging a lot over here. So it could have, you guys could have said something else that I didn't hear. It's lagging. Uh, <laughs> All good. Enough with the yeah. We'll we'll talk about cross country another time, definitely. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, there's good movement parts that we realized as we put this thing together that came from cross country because like we locked into this group of people that we like had a shared belief and a common goal and. Mm -hmm. Even like the first year we were supposed to get gold, but our second best runner literally collapsed 100 meters before the finish line, had to go to the hospital. They don't even know why, but Black instead of winning by 30 points, we lost by four. And so wow. then it was like the second year we had that like fire under our ass and our shirt said unfinished business. And we knew every run we were putting in was yeah. to beat the back team. Was to we finish the business, right? So you take a group of people and you give them one identity, you give them uniforms, you give them a way to get there, training, and then you give them something to fight for. That's, I mean, that's why sports teams that's, have yeah, big that's, that's, yeah. So like all the fans watching that Raptors game is like, you know, they say we, not yeah. that we the it's, North. It's we. Yeah, it's like you're not playing basketball. You're doing nothing to contribute. You couldn't have shot that shot. Yeah, exactly. But you feel part of it. You got a jersey. Yeah, you got yeah. I mean, that goal. It's like no, you didn't do shit. Yeah, but that's yeah. like what making an enemy, like like so, an, an enemy, a common enemy, right? Yeah, or a common goal, right? You can yeah. fight for things or fight against fight. I mean, but moving away from pain is always more powerful. Mm. Okay. Yeah. When we when we tried out, we didn't know that this college team was like the best in the country. I, I like barely. We were barely we barely prepared. made it. <laughs> we were barely prepared, and we we're definitely not prepared to like support the best college team in the country so we had to step the fuck up every run to make yeah. sure that we earned that as that kind of felt like a haze and kind of felt like a belief of an identity of a falcon mm -hmm. you know he taught us like falcons don't get past in the last kilometer that's a belief he had to instill in us and then we had to adopt and yeah. then use and Got so then it. you're gassed and you have you know half a k to go you're like wait falcons don't get past in the last kilometer right right step the fuck up right Awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, just giving people things to believe in and then, you know, taking their self-limiting beliefs and kind of like changing those to more positive things. There's, yeah, if we were starting a podcast, we would have a very specific identity for a very specific audience. Mm. We would have something to fight against. We would take their beliefs that, you know, information is useless, but transformation is powerful. And we'd give them every tool possible on how to transform in very specific sequential patterns. And what? then- what would you call action? I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. 
Go ahead. Uh, I was gonna say like we uh we just partnered with a uh, the world leading pressure point trainer coach pressure whatever point fighting system. pressure point Self fighter. Defense. Okay, cool. Yeah, he trains all of the police and CIA and you know sometimes the Russian mafia. But he uh so we're unleashing the Assassin Academy. But what we're doing is we're giving the founding fathers who are going to help us build this thing. Uh, they're going to get like a black ring. And that's going to be <laughs> something that only the very first group of men get. Yeah. Right? So then they feel, and now they have to tell us why we should accept them. So they're fighting for their spot. So then, it, I mean, then conversions become really simple. They, yeah. They're talking themselves into it. We don't have to. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're, you're flipping the script. That's, that's genius. Um, I'm curious for your podcast. Those are all really killer things you've done. Like when it comes to just naming off those things, those are the things people, a lot of people forget or just don't take enough time to, to think through before they start one. Um, what would your call to action be? Like you just finished kick ass episode. Like what would your next step for that listener be to get them further into your, into your funnel, into your field and into kind of your world? Oh, we'd have a membership site for sure. We would have a sequential membership site. That's a lower end monthly payment that moves them through an identity to the big result. His podcasts mm -hmm. are really good, but you can't go that deep. The podcast. It's no. It's very like level. But like when you can bring somebody into your world and like, especially once somebody starts paying, the more people that pay, the more you can do, the more you can give back, the more you can utilize the more resources. Right. Yeah. So that can really change lives, but it's really hard with a one-time payment or like a one-on-one -on -one type of thing. Well, yeah. it's not one-on-one. -on -one, you just can't scale we would create what we help other people to create is one program to get the result. And so we would take podcasts and just continually bring them back to one program. Well, how would you, how would you just say, Hey, like go check out the website, go check out the membership site or what would your offer be? I'm trying to dig into the, the marketer mind, the master marketer mind that you guys have mm -hmm. into like making this conceptual or making it really tactical. Actually, it's like, would it be a, a one month, $1 trial, $1, like for the month trial, free first month yeah, um, first month works really well with uh at least with funk we we turned our churn down from like 30 percent down mm -hmm. i was like it was upwards of 40 percent on a seven day trial mm -hmm. now it's 13 to 15 percent because we give them on a 30 day. day on a 30 day yeah oh, nice so, so that works really well because that's a fitness system because we we know once they give um so it's a full phase but they're going to get results and yeah. those results are going to stick around for phase two. And then, you know, they're a part of the brotherhood. They're not going to want to leave. So mm -hmm. that's why the 30 days works because we give them time to fully indoctrinate. Yeah. But some people might have like high ticket coaching and stuff. So it might make sense to do like a five day challenge just to get them to commit. It's, it's more like, what's the one thing you need to get them bought into What's the yeah. factor. Like with, with us, we know we need to give them enough time to start getting used to working out with funk because he's a lot of fun to work out with and the brotherhood is very engaging. Yeah. So once they have those elements, then we know they're going to stick around. And then with like that mint finance software, they yeah. know if they can get you uh, to connect your bank account, and your credit card, then you can run a full report and then you're not going to leave mint. And then you're more likely to become a customer, but you're not going to get rid of the software. So it's like, what do you need people to do? What's that first stick factor? Yeah. And then, yeah, everything you talk about in the podcast can just be like, what's that? What am I trying to get them to believe? What's the North Star here? And then you can just create all kinds of content that leads back to the one thing. So for us, like the movement, the tribe, you know, that's you need the message that creates the vehicle, which is a membership site that builds your tribe where you can install these systems. So then we can talk about all these different things that get people to believe you need a membership site and a tribe. I love it. I love what you put there. It's like you get people results in advance first. You get them losing the weight first into the tribe, doing the workouts, and then they're so invested they don't want to leave. Like right. you pay the year, it's fine, easy, you've done yeah. it. This place transformation, not transaction. Exactly, you get them. You transform first. Yeah. Burn an ad spend to get people into a free trial because we know the numbers and we know they're going to stick around and we know we're changing lives and it's super Bingo. cool. Bingo! That's yeah. awesome, guys. Um, for those who are who want to know kind of like they want to peel back the layers, they want to kind of see behind the scenes how you guys do what you do, where can they go? I'll have the link down below, but like Instagram, Facebook, social media, like tell me what places they can follow you and connect with you. Yeah, so it's the uh, 
Meraki, which we haven't mentioned. That's our, our business name. It means it's like a Greek word to put a piece of yourself into your work. And uh, so we bought the domain Meraki, M-V-M-C, so Meraki Movement, M-E-R-A-K-I, M-V-M-T dot com, uh, forward slash podcast dash domination. That's where you'll see the, uh, the offer for this to see kind of behind the scenes, to see our roadmap, to see what we do for our high-end clients who offer transformation and want that step-by-step -step system. So we'll physically mail you the roadmap and give you access to the back-end trainings that show you exactly what we do and why we do it in what sequential order. Yeah, so, I'll have the link below. I think that's really, really cool. And for those listening to us on the podcast, it'll be in the show notes. So there'll be plenty of ways to check it out. So guys, it's been really interesting. Got some really good tactics, really good strategies on how to really get people into your world. And um, I don't think a lot of people are talking about this, but uh, it's what builds empire. So thank you. For sure. Love it. Yeah, it's been fun. Dude, likewise. Appreciate it. Hey, what's up? Lewis again. And I get asked this question a lot. So I wanted to answer it here for you in a unique manner. And that question is, Lewis, what exactly do you do? How do you help podcasters? What exactly do you and what does podcast domination really help with? Well, instead of me sitting here and telling you all the amazing stuff about us, I thought it'd be fun and interesting for you guys to hear what our clients are saying. So here you go. Please enjoy. Lewis literally makes my life so much easier. All I have to do is record my content. I don't have to worry about editing it. I don't have to worry about writing show notes. I don't have to create any of my graphics to promote it. He literally does everything for me. We hired Lewis to kind of help us set up podcasts and for us to put our content out and kind of grow our brand. And all I really have to say, it's been a huge success. It's been really easy. Lewis and his whole team have made the whole process easy. From setting it up originally, which with podcasts is kind of intimidating. And there's a lot of things that if you're not really, and if you don't know a lot about the platform, that it's very time consuming. So Lewis made all of that easy. In the beginning, I'm not gonna lie, I was completely overwhelmed confused, stressed out because I went on YouTube trying to figure out how to set up a successful podcast and actually going on YouTube, I was just bombarded by so much information that I just wanted to give up on the idea. And then I met a good friend of ours that introduced me to Lewis and we hit it off and he just said to me, it's really, really simple. I will take care of everything for you. I think what Lewis has done for me has made it seem so painless. He has took my idea and saved me money, he saved me time and energy, and more importantly, he's made my Persistence Factor podcast sound professional. Well, I hope you enjoyed those sound bites as much as I enjoyed putting them together. <laughs> if you have any questions about how we can help you grow, launch, or further your podcasting efforts, feel free to reach out to me at Lewis at Podcast Domination, or you can reach out to my team and ask them some questions. Hello at podcastdomination.co. Both are .co. Just make sure that's, uh, keep that in mind. Anyways, I'll see you on the next episode. And until next time, keep dominating. <laughs>